Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to go over my top five American Express cards. Now American Express offers many different cards, whether they be cashback cards, hotel point earning cards, airline miles earning cards, or membership awards points earning cards. And depending on your needs, there probably is an American Express card that could work out really well being added into your wallet. But since American Express offers so many good cards, there are many people who end up getting themselves analysis paralysis on which American Express card they should be prioritizing next to add into their wallet. Some of the cards that I'm gonna be naming on this list here are currently ones that I don't even have yet, but they're ones that I look forward to adding in the future because I see how much benefits you can end up getting from having these cards. So let's dive into my top five American Express cards. Coming in at fifth place is going to be the Blue Business Plus card. Now the Blue Business Plus card is a very simple card giving you 2X back on all of your purchases. They do have a cap at $50,000 worth of spend, which I find to be kind of annoying because there are many businesses that are out there that you're gonna be spending $50,000 possibly in a month. So if that ends up being the case, this card isn't really very useful for you. But for a lot of the small businesses, this can end up being a great card to have to be able to get yourself a simple 2X back on all of your purchases. And because it is a business credit card, it doesn't add a new line of credit to your personal credit report. And also this card has no annual fee and it's actually the only card on this list that doesn't have an annual fee because many of American Express's cards not only have annual fees, but they have quite high annual fees. And because this card is a card that earns membership reward points, if you end up having this card but closing out any of your other American Express cards that also earn membership reward points, you can end up storing them all on this card so you can keep your membership reward points alive with this card without having to worry about paying the higher annual fees for the other American Express cards. Now I understand this is a very simple card and there's probably people who would remove this card off the list, but I feel that a 2X card still ends up being a pretty strong card and that's the reason why it rounds off the bottom of my top five. Coming in at fourth place is going to be the American Express Business Platinum card. Now this card has the potential of being a very valuable card depending on your needs. The Business Platinum card has a $695 annual fee, but it has a few useful credits that can help offset that. You're gonna get yourself a $400 Dell credit, a $200 airline credit, and also a $120 wireless service credit. Now there are other credits that are offered with this card, but I find these ones to be the most useful to help reduce that annual fee. And one of the most important benefits of having the American Express Business Platinum Card is getting yourself access to all the different lounges that are connected within American Express's network. So if you're someone who flies a lot, there's a potential to get yourself a ton of value when you are accessing these different lounges. But the special power that the American Express Business Platinum Card has is that you can get yourself a 35% rebate on points redemptions for certain flights when you redeem through American Express's travel. To get the 35% rebate for your points, you do have to book through American Express's travel, and also it has to be either with a pre-selected airline or you have to be booking a business class or a first class flight. Now, although I typically transfer my points to transfer partners when redeeming them, it would be nice to have this option to get yourself more than one cent per point in value as a redemption. I really enjoy JetBlue Mint, and JetBlue was actually the first airline that gave me a desire to wanna to sit in the front of the plane because I traveled transcontinental to go visit my family in Boston a couple of times throughout the year. Now, American Express doesn't have a good transfer ratio with JetBlue, and also JetBlue points don't always give you the best value when you're looking to try to get yourself premium seats, but sometimes JetBlue Mint can end up being a cheaper cash fare. I've seen it run along the lines of like a little over $500, and usually the points with JetBlue are gonna be matching with dynamic pricing, and it's probably end up being somewhere near about 50 or 50 plus thousand points with JetBlue. But instead of transferring over these points to JetBlue and getting yourself a bad ratio for your points, you could actually book this through Amex's travel, get yourself the 35% rebate, and then also be able to earn yourself points because this ends up being considered as a cash fare even though you are booking it with your points because you're doing it through American Express's travel portal. So it'll cost you less and also you'll be able to earn yourself future points for hopefully another JetBlue Mint flight. Now again this probably isn't going to be a way that I would redeem the majority of my membership award points but if I saw a good deal like this to redeem my points for a business class flight I would definitely be someone to jump on that. And when it comes to earnings for this card, this card just isn't the strongest earner card. It does give you back 5X back on flights, which is a good return for flight purchases. You also get 5X back through Amex's travel, and you only get yourself 1X back for most other purchases. Unless you make a purchase over $5,000, then you get 1.5% back for that purchase. Now, I didn't want the welcome offers to be the main focus of any of the cards in this video, but it's difficult to talk about the American Express Business Platinum card without bringing up its welcome offer. 
because it has the highest welcome offer for any American Express card, giving you, I've seen it ranging from 150,000 up to 200 or even 250,000 membership war points after you end up hitting the minimum spend, which is absolutely insane. I mean, ranging from 150 to 250,000 points, you're looking at getting yourself a business class flight round trip to pretty much anywhere in the world. But with this insanely high welcome offer, there does come quite a bit of spend that would be required. So you'd have to be spending either 15 or $20,000 over the course of three months to be able to get all of these points. Now, this is not an amount of spend that I normally do. And that's the reason why I haven't gotten myself the American Express business platinum card because I want to be able to get that very lucrative welcome offer. But if for some reason I get a massive bill that's going to require a ton of spend, you best believe that I will be applying for the American Express business platinum card. Coming in at third place is going to be the American Express gold card. Now this card really is a beast of a earner card. If you are someone who has a family, especially a larger family, and you spend quite a bit on food, then I don't think you can really get yourself a better dining card than the American Express gold card. The American Express Gold Card gets you 4X back on restaurants and also at grocery stores. It does also give you 3X back on flights, which is a pretty decent return for flight purchases. Now this card does have a $250 annual fee, but it ends up giving you a couple of different credits to help offset the annual fee. You get $120 in an Uber credit that gets broken up in $10 each month throughout the entire year, use it or lose it. And you also get yourself $120 in a dining credit that ends up being connected with a number of different restaurants. Grubhub is the most popular that can connect you with the most restaurants. Again, a $10 a month, either use it or lose it throughout the entire year. So all of the credits together end up giving you $240 worth of value for this $250 annual fee card. Now, while this is a card that I rate highly, it's also one that I may end up canceling pretty soon. And it's not because it is a bad card, it's just because even though this is a beast of an earner card, you are gonna need to do a decent amount of spend on this card to justify keeping it year after year. And with me being a single man, I really don't spend that much when it comes to groceries and restaurants, especially when you compare it to families of four or more. And while I find the Uber credit very valuable, I don't use Grubhub as a service unless I am using it for this credit. So I don't like that this card has changed my spending habits because if I didn't have this card, then Grubhub would never be something that I'd be using. So because I have this, although I am getting myself $120 worth of value for Grubhub, it's not something that I enjoy doing every single month. It's just something that I end up doing because I don't wanna lose value with having this card. Now, I do still recommend this card to a lot of people, but I'm just trying to reduce the annual fee cards that I have in my wallet. And if I do happen to have any annual fee cards in my wallet, the credits that I connect with them are gonna to have to be ones that either I can use in one quick swoop all at one time, or they're gonna to have to be ones where if I do need to put in the work to use them month after month, they're gonna to have to give me more value than the entire annual fee. Coming in at number two is the American Express Personal Platinum Card. Now, some people may argue that the Business Platinum Card is better than the Personal Platinum Card, and I can see that argument, but when it comes down for my own use case, I find it a lot easier and also the credits to be more valuable with the Personal Platinum Card as compared to the Business Platinum Card. So like the Business Platinum Card, this card's gonna be the same when it comes to the lounge access, also giving you the 5X multiplier on flights and through American Express's travel. You do only get yourself 1X back on all purchases. Even if you do end up having a $5,000 purchase, it's not the same as with the Business Platinum Card where you get that additional half a percent for those larger purchases. And also, this card doesn't have the option of giving you the 35% rebate when you are redeeming your membership war points through American Express's travel. Now that feature alone is the reason why I believe that many people would prefer the Business Platinum Card over the regular Platinum Card. But for myself, as I said earlier in the video, is that I find that to be a nice feature to have, but I just don't see myself using it very frequently. So because of that, I don't value it incredibly high, but it wouldn't be bad to have it as an option for certain use cases. This card has the same $695 annual fee as the Business Platinum Card, but the difference with the Personal Platinum Card is the credits that you get to help offset it are going to be a $200 airline credit, a $200 Uber credit, a $240 digital entertainment credit, and then a $200 hotel credit. I find these to be more useful credits and they're also more valuable credits as well. Just like with the Business Platinum Card, there are more credits that are attached to it that I don't find to be as either easy to use or as valuable, but as a whole, these four main credits, I think end up being a strong set of credits that most people can end up using. The American Express Personal Platinum Card is probably my most valuable card. 
because I use it for all of my flight purchases. I use it to be able to get into lounges many times throughout the year. And also when it comes to just improving my travel experience, it does that in a variety of different ways. I definitely find this to be a very powerful card that I know isn't for everybody, but if you like to travel a lot, the American Express Platinum card is an excellent one to have with you. And coming in at first place is going to be the Hilton Aspire card. Now I know that not everyone stays at Hilton properties and bank points are more valuable than hotel points. But when you look at the Hilton Aspire card, it is one of the most super powered cards out there that I can't see it being put below any other American Express card. Right off the bat for getting this card, you get Hilton Diamond status, which is Hilton's top tier status. Now I know that there's gonna be people out there who say, well, that makes it less special because if everyone can just get this card, then everyone can be a diamond member. And if everyone a diamond member, then no one might as well be a diamond member in that instance. And I get that argument to a degree, but you still get all the benefits of being a diamond member. Now I don't have the Hilton Aspire card, but I currently have Hilton Gold status because of my American Express Platinum card. And when I went to Fiji, I stayed at a Hilton property and because of being a gold member, I got upgraded to get myself a pool right outside of my room. So I had a personal pool for this hotel property I was staying at in Fiji. Now while at this hotel, I met a number of different people and we all decided to get together later on and go out to dinner. And after we were done with dinner, we started talking about our different types of rooms and I met some different Kiwis and also Aussies who were talking about their rooms and how they were kind of small. And I was saying about how I got upgraded to a room that had a pool. And the Australians and New Zealanders didn't have any status, so they didn't get upgraded to any type of rooms that had pools or additional space. So when we began to discuss an after party, people suggested that we go to the room with the personal pool. But then there was this other super chill American guy who came in from San Fran who also got an upgrade, except for he had his Hilton Aspire card and he got upgraded to the presidential suite. This room was going for like $4,000 a night. It was a two-story castle. And here I am thinking that I was cool because I had a little pool. Long story short, having diamond status can still end up being incredibly valuable, especially if you travel overseas. In fact, I bet you if you were to ask many people who are overseas, if they could get themselves diamond status with Hilton for only the $550 annual fee that's connected with it, there probably end up being a decent amount of takers who would take that offer without all the other benefits that are also connected with the Hilton Aspire card. A lot of people here in America don't realize how fortunate we are to be able to get these benefits, earn all these points with our different cards because in most other countries, they don't get anywhere near as easily as we do. And on top of the diamond status, you get $400 in resorts credits, you get $200 in airline credits, you get really good multipliers when making purchases at Hilton Properties, and also you get yourself a free night award certificate that can be used at properties that can end up being worth double the amount that the annual fee is. The Hilton Aspire card is one of the most super power cards to ever be made, and that's the reason why it comes in at number one for American Express cards. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section down below, how would you rank your top five American Express cards? Now, if you haven't been interested in any American Express cards, please check out my links in the description box to learn more. If you do decide to use any of my links, it does really help out the channel and I'll be incredibly thankful for your support. And if you happen to have any questions about any of these American Express cards, drop it down in the comment section down below and I'll do the best I can to answer it. And if you happen to realize this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video and have a beautiful rest of your day.